students! Today we are going to cover Chapter 2, Electricity. There are two kinds of electric charge, namely the positive charge and the negative charge. Same charges repel each other, while unlike charges attract each other. A neutral body can be attracted by another body which has either positive or negative charge. Electrons have a relative charge of negative 1, while protons have a relative charge of positive 1. Sum of charge is equal to the number of charged particles times the charge of one particle, or Q is equal to NP. Question 1. Find the charge of 2.5 times 10 to the 19 electrons. Given that the charge of one electron is negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs, please pause the video and try it yourself. From the given information, we calculate the charge is equal to negative 4 coulombs. An electric field is a region in which an electric charge particle experiences an electric force. Electric field is represented by a number of lines with arrows called electric lines of force or electric field lines. The direction of the field at a point is defined by the direction of the electric force exerted on a positive test charge placed on that point. While the strength of the electric field is indicated by how close the field lines are to each other. The closer the field lines, the stronger the electric field in that region. The lines of force are directed outwards for a positive charge and inwards for a negative charge. Also, the electric lines of force will never cross with each other. The figure shows a few examples of the field patterns that you need to know in the SPM syllabus. A ping pong ball coated with a conducting material is hung by a nylon thread. When the ping pong ball is placed in between two plates connected to an extra high tension power supply, opposite charges are induced on the surface of the ball. The ball will still remain stationary. This is because the force exerted on the ball by the positive plate is equal to the force exerted on it by the negative plate. If the ping pong ball is displaced to the right to touch the positive plate, it will then be charged with a positive charge. Since like charges repel, the ball will be pushed towards the negative plate. When the ping pong ball touches the negative plate, it will be charged with negative charge. Again, like charges repel, the ball will be pushed towards its positive plate. This process repeats again and again, causing the ping pong ball to oscillate to and fro continuously between the two plates. Normally, with the absence of wind, the flame of a candle is symmetric. The heat of a candle flame removes electrons from the air molecules around it, and therefore ionize the molecule. As a result, the flame is surrounded by a large number of positive and negative ions. If the candle is placed in between two plates connected to an extra high tension power supply, the positive ions will be attracted to the negative plate, while the negative ions will be attracted to the positive plate. The spreading of the flame is not symmetric. This is because the positive ions are much larger than the negative ions. It will collide with the other air molecules and bring more air molecules towards the negative plate. An electric current is a measure of the rate of flow of electric charge through a given cross-section of a conductor. In other words, current is the measure of how fast the charge flow is through a cross-section of a conductor. Current is equal to the amount of charge flow over the time taken. Conventionally, the direction of the electric current is taken to be the flow of positive charge. The electric flow is in the opposite direction of the conventional current flow. In a circuit, current flows from the positive terminal to the negative terminal, while electrons flow from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. The SI unit for current is ampere. The current at a point is 1 ampere if 1 coulomb of electric charge flows through that point in 1 second. Therefore, 1 ampere is equal to 1 coulomb per second. Question 2. If 30 coulombs of electric charge flows past a point in a wire in 2 minutes, what is the current in the wire? Please pause the video and try it yourself. From the information given, by using I is equal to Q over T, we can calculate that the current is equal to 0.25 amps. Question 3. The current of 0.5 amps flows through a bulb. How many electrons have flown through the bulb in 5 minutes? Please pause the video and try it yourself. From the information given, by using I is equal to Q over T, we can calculate that the charge is equal to 150 coulombs. With that, the number of electrons is equal to 9.375 times 10 to the power of 20 electrons. The electric potential at a point in an electric field is the work done to bring a unit positive charge from infinity to the point. 
The potential difference between two points is defined as the work done in moving one coulomb of positive charge from one point in an electric field to another point. Potential difference is equal to the work done over amount of charge flow. From the diagram, the work done to move a charge of 2C from point A to point B is 10 joules. The potential difference between A and B is equal to 5 volts. Ohm's law states that the current flowing in the metallic conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference applied across its ends, provided that the physical conditions, such as temperature, are constant. Resistance The SI unit of resistance is ohms. 1 ohm is the resistance of a material when current of 1 ampere flows through, while potential difference of 1 volt is maintained. The equation of resistance is V over I. In the potential difference against current graph, the gradient of the graph is equal to the resistance of the resistor. From the diagram, the gradient of the graph is 5. Therefore, the resistance is 5 ohms. Resistance of a given conductor depends on its length, cross-sectional area, temperature, and type of material. Resistance is directly proportional to the length of the conductor, while inversely proportional to the cross-sectional area of the conductor. A conductor with higher temperature has higher resistance. Different materials have different resistivity. Since resistance is directly proportional to the length and inversely proportional to the cross-sectional area of the conductor, if two resistors of the same material have same temperature, we can relate the resistance of the two resistors by the following equation. The resistors connected in one non-branched wire is said to be connected in series, whereas resistors connected in a branch wire is said to be connected in parallel. In a series circuit, the effective resistance is equal to the sum of the individual resistance. In a parallel circuit, the effective resistance of the resistors can be calculated from the following equation. Please pause the video and try it yourself. For question 4a, the answer is 11 ohms. For question 4b, the answer is 1 ohm. For question 4c, the answer is 3 ohms. For question 4d, the answer is 4 ohms. In a series circuit, the more resistors with equal resistance in the circuit, the higher the effective resistance of the circuit. In a parallel circuit, the more resistors with equal resistance in the circuit, the lower the effective resistance of the circuit. To have a better understanding, here are some examples. Question 5a. The total effective resistance of the circuit is 0.8 ohms. Find the value of R. Please pause the video to try it yourself. The answer to R is 2 ohms. Question 5b. The total effective resistance of the circuit is 4 ohms. Find the value of R. Please pause the video to try it yourself. The answer to R is 4 ohms. In a series circuit, the current flow into a resistor is equal to the current flow inside the resistor, which is equal to the current flow out of the resistor. The current at any point of the circuit is the same. In a parallel circuit, the current flow into a parallel circuit is equal to the sum of the current in each branch of the circuit. If the resistance of the two resistors is the same, the current will be divided equally to both of the resistors. In a series circuit, the sum of the potential difference across individual resistors in between two points in a series circuit is equal to the potential difference across the two points. In a parallel circuit, the potential difference across all resistors in a parallel circuit is the same. In a series circuit, the current flow through each of the resistors is equal to the current flow through the whole circuit. The potential difference across the whole circuit is equal to the EMF if the internal resistance is ignored. The effective resistance for the whole circuit is equal to R1 plus R2. By Ohm's law, the following equation is formed. Question 6. From the circuit diagram, find the reading of the ammeter and the current flow through the resistors. Please pause the video to try it yourself. From the data given, the current is equal to 6 amps. The current flow through the resistor is equal to the reading of the ammeter, thus the current flow is also 6 amps. Question 7. From the circuit diagram, find the reading of the ammeter and the current flow through each of the resistors. Please pause the video to try it yourself. From the data given, the current is equal to 2 amps. The current flow through each of the resistors is equal to the reading of the ammeter, thus the current flow is also 2 amps. In a parallel circuit, the potential difference across each of the resistors is equal to the EMF if the internal resistance of the cell is ignored. By Ohm's law, the following equation is formed. Question 8. 
From the circuit diagram, find the reading of the ammeter and the current in each of the resistors. Please pause the video to try it yourself. The effective resistance of the two resistors in parallel is equal to 2 ohms. By using the equation V is equal to IR, the ammeter reading is equal to 1.5 amps. Using the same method, the current in the 3 ohm resistor is equal to 1 amp, while the current equals to 0.5 amps in the 6 ohm resistor. Question 9. Figure shows three identical resistors connected in parallel in a circuit. Given that the resistance of the resistors are 6 ohms each, find the reading of all the ammeters in the figure. Please pause the video to try this yourself. From the information given, the value of ammeter 1 is equal to 1 amp. Same goes for ammeter 2. In the circuit above, if the current in the circuit is I, then the potential difference across each of the resistors is shown as the following. Question 10. Find the potential difference across each of the resistors in the diagram given. Please pause the video to try it yourself. From the calculations, the potential difference of resistor 1 is equal to 4 volts, and the potential difference of resistor 2 is equal to 8 volts. Congratulations students! We have completed Chapter 2, Part 1. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video.